not quite sure why I didn't do this question yet. Um, it, it, there's um, uh, something instructive in this question here, because uh, I think when you are reading it, you might think you don't have enough information because it says the astronaut measures the length of their spaceship to be this. Think that's the proper length. While an earthbound observer, where the spaceship is moving, measures it to be, so this is the length contracted length. This has answered the following questions, and it's uh, going straight for the Lorentz vector gamma. And if you're thinking, hmm, looking at gamma is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus beta squared, uh, there's nothing I can do, and I don't know beta. And that's because you are actually, um, the way the question is worded, you are basically given gamma, because this is the expression for length of contraction. Uh, similar to time dilation, really what it comes down to is you have your length in the lap frame, you have the proper length, and it's a question of do you have gamma here or do you have gamma here? One of those two. <laughs> or I guess you might be writing divided by gamma, either here or here. One of those two. So um, the phrase I remember that helps me remember correctly each time is moving rulers are short which means L, which measures the moving ruler, it must be shorter than the proper length. And you put in the gamma factor to make this work. So I want the left-hand side to be, to be smaller. I could either do it by multiplying left-hand side by gamma, because if I do then this L could be smaller than LP, and equality will still hold. Or I could take the right-hand side, and divide it by gamma, which is always greater than 1. So, um, so dividing by gamma always means your number will get smaller. Now, once you have this, uh, it, it's a one short step to the, the kind of expression that you need, the formula that you need to answer this, which is so solving this for gamma. So multiply both sides by gamma, divide by L, then you get gamma on the left hand side is equal to the proper length divided by the contracted length. And you can actually get a similar kind of expression if you are working with the time dilation. There you would say, okay, gamma is the dilated duration of time divided by the proper time. So when, whenever a question gives you um, both the contracted and the proper length or the dilated and the proper time, what that means is you have gamma. You just take the ratio of those two and you get gamma. So uh, I don't think I can do this in my head. So let me just write it down. My gamma should be 150, the, the proper length divided by the contracted length. So gamma is a 3.497. And just keeping some extra uh, significant figures for reason I'll explain in a little bit. So it's okay. Um, once I have gamma, when it asks for the speed relative to Earth, that's where you should remember this formula that I derived for beta a while back. Beta is equal to square root of 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. So that I have MRIs because I use it so much. And I think there's some way in which you develop your intuition for beta where this, uh, having this memorized makes a lot of sense. So um, I can just uh, calculate this here, my beta, and beta is what I'm looking for because I'm looking for speed in units of C. It's going to be square root of 1 minus 1 divided by, and this previous output is my gamma, previous output squared. Yeah, 0 0.958. And let's see the significant figure, yeah, 0 0.958. And you will see with these special relativity questions, sometimes um, me advising you uh, how many significant figures to use. It's because it actually, um, number of necessary significant figures, it varies quite a bit, depending on the situation. And that's actually what I want you to talk about. So let me submit here, get that it's correct. <laughs> and then I think we are done with the homework questions. I've 